Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. We've got a crazy episode this week as we unstep the mask for the first time ever on Parlay in order to replace a badly corroded compression post. Sloppy! We'll take you through it step by step so that you'll all know how to remove your own mask in the future. Unless, of course, you're already a pro. Nice work! Beautiful! So we put a huge amount of effort into preparing everything so that we don't waste money on having the crane wait around for us to unstep the mast. So as part of the prep, we're going to see if we can get all of the turnbuckles at least moving. Just even if we can get half a turn, it's all I want to see so that uh, we're not going to have delays with seized turnbuckles. Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go, and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do, than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Oh, ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that went. Yeah, baby, that one's gonna be fine. Okay, that's one out of nine. Oh. So you just have to check the direction of the thread. This one goes that way to undo. This is exactly why we bought this huge shifter. Two out of nine. Yeah, easy. Four out of nine. Oh, that did not sound good. Oh. Fuck no. Oh. Starting to feel easier. The big fella, the big fella's got it now. <laughs> He's hiding behind the mask. With his little vice grip doing all the work. This side is seized. And that stem ball fitting is turning in its housing. Ooh. Is that the uh, shroud or your back? <laughs> He's moving! So now it's just the top two that we gotta get moving. The instructions from Z Spars and Lagoon was to get, I think it was 1.8 ton yeah. or 2 ton or something of force on these. Uh, we were just trying to get the minimum value, by the way. Um, we didn't realize that this was all probably putting excess pressure on the bulkheads as well. So when we were trying to get the tension values that uh, Lagoon and that recommended, we just bent the boat. We know a lot more now than we did back then. Yeah. Guess I'm gonna go try to do the top ones now. Give it a crack. There you go. <laughs> There's the FLIR camera. Looking good. See if we can get this moving. Holy shit! She's moving! Woo! This is the last one, guys. Oh, got it. Come on, baby, please move. Oh my, oh my. Jeez. Oh, it's bending the vice grips. Oh! Vice grips broke. Look at that. Pin flew out of it. You wanna catch these? Catch. <laughs> there was no way I was gonna be able to turn it alone. So I dragged Jamie up the mast with me for a little more manpower. <gasps> We tried every combination of pushing and pulling, but could not get the turnbuckle to budge. 
so it was time to try something different. We're gonna heat the turnbuckle, so that's gonna expand. Try not to heat the stud going into it too much, and just get that bad boy moving. That's all we need. Just one little, uh, and we're away. Uh, 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 Woo! It's a race. Oh. Oh. You better not fall, you'll land on me. Yep. Get them on as tight as you can. There we go. Oh my God. I can give it more, but I'm scared. Yes! Yes! No, push yourself off the radar. Push yourself off there. Now pull that. Oh! Far out. What? Oh, hot. Oh, <laughs> <my knees>. Shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can you give it a little bit then? <sighs> yes, we did it. Oh. We're good to go. <laughs> I'm not scared now. <laughs> Jamie, you look horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, did it! Yeah! Okay, that is epic. We got them all moving, so we know that at least all the shrouds and diamonds are going to be able to come off. The rigging is getting made today in Long Beach by Sea Tech Yachting. They're going to ship it straight down to San Diego, hopefully this afternoon. Then it's got to cross the border to Tijuana, and then it's going to go on a plane from Tijuana to here. Okay, so this compression post is completely rusted at the bottom here and there's rust at the top. So I rang Thomas Gailey, the president of Lagoon, and, and he has strongly recommended to replace it. We saw it rusting a long time ago, but we've just opened it up again now and it's, it's gotten much worse. But I bought a spare one anyway. It was uh, $700. But the material is obviously inadequate for this application and we're just replacing a new one with the same material, so it's gonna happen again. So Laguna trying to come up with a different material to use here, or a different uh, treatment process at least. And to make things even worse, that plate is angled that way. So the only way that that top could move right now is in that direction, the opposite to what we want. And he said it's impossible to get this one out, or the new one in, if it is this length. You won't be able to take it out if you don't cut it in right in the middle. Well, if I can't get this out without cutting it, then there's no way I can get my new one in without it being in two pieces, yeah? Yeah. Obviously, all the cables that go up the mast, the VHF, the lights, the wind camera. vane, camera, the radar, all of that kind of stuff comes down through here. So we have to disconnect every single one of those, pull them up through, that'll come out with the mast. It's going to be a busy week. So we got to work pulling down the ceiling panels, trying not to break anything in the process. Ooh, what was that? Just a normal week for the boys. <laughs> Which is difficult when everything is screwed from behind, including the piece of trim that we needed to remove to get the compression post in. So that's the first thing I dealt with. that screw so we should probably cut them off so someone doesn't get injured
We then proceeded to disconnect and label all of the cables running through the compression post and pull them up on deck. Okay, so me and the chosen one, Stephen, have uh, disconnected them all. Okay, I chose the longest one first. Here we go. Fleur camera. This was about all we could do with the compression post until the mask came off. So this is all going to come with the mask. So we moved on to the next job, which was to remove all of the hardware off the mainsail and flake it on deck. Let's try to get the foot of the sail down here somewhere and we'll start flaking it. Okay, that's good. Look at this guy, he's rowing past. He's got a repurposed jet ski hull and that's his kayak and he goes fishing out of it. So cool. It was then a matter of removing the boom and the mast was pretty much ready to be unstepped. Okay, that's free. Okay, you guys have the weight. Okay, you might have to just watch it. Okay, so now we just have four halyards and a topping lift, keeping the mast attached to the boat, apart from the standing rigging. Morning, everybody. Very, 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 very big day today. We're moving to La Cruz, that's where the crane is. We're gonna remove the mast. The boat is built around that bloody compression post. So we're gonna to have to cut that one out and we've had to shorten the one that we have, which is from Lagoon, just to get it in. And I'm gonna put some steel plates under it to make up for that lost length. This is a pretty significant moment in Parley's history because it got hit by Hurricane Irma. Um, but the rig stayed up and a lot of boats in the BVI's at least lost their entire rig in that storm. It was the biggest hurricane in Atlantic history. So um, the rig's obviously pretty strong and there's no actual sign of wear and tear from that hurricane. But now that we're going to put all new standing rigging on, um, it's kind of like one of the final things that I needed to do on Parlay to, to have her be like 100% but yeah this is huge I've never seen the rig off Parlay and it probably hasn't come off in 10 years since it was since it was built so this is all really really good stuff to be doing um, really really expensive stuff to be doing but just the peace of mind that we're gonna have crossing the Pacific now with a brand new rig is priceless Once we get there, I'm going to take the wind vane off, I'm going to take the VHF antenna off, and I'm going to take the wind decks off, just so there's nothing sticking out up the top there in case the, the strop of the crane gets in the way. The final job to do before we unstep the mast was to tidy up all of the halyards and cables, except for the one halyard that I was going to use to go up and attach the strop of the crane to. So with everything completely ready to go, we moved into the haul out slip, and from then on, it was go time.
didn't realise that was coming out first. It will swing. <laughs> you hold on to that. Okay. Stop it from hitting the boat. Got it. The mast, everything. Okay. Put the head up and down in the sun. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Holy shit. So the mast was officially unstepped. After 10 years, a hurricane, and two lightning strikes, the only thing still attached was the forestay. So we knocked the pin out. Whew, okay, we're disconnected. And slowly craned the mast into the shipyard for us to replace every single piece of standing rigging. Nice work. the two upper shrouds off because we have to move it again and we don't need them so we just take them off now and then it's going to be one less thing we have to handle She's a power cat. Mm. I thought I was going to pass out a couple times in there. Okay, let's get out of here. You can't really tell on the video, but the heat in that shipyard took a serious toll on us. So we headed straight out to the anchorage to cool off. It looks like you've been working on the railroad. <laughs> better really. Saved a bunch of money by doing it all ourselves and got it done. One and a half hours that took from the time that the crane arrived to the time that the crane left. Have you ever done that before? I've watched little sailboats do it but not nothing like this. It was really cool to see. I've never witnessed that before. Everybody did their part. The perfect team. Such a nice feeling to have a good uh, Good crew like this, just getting stuck in, getting it done. Still cost me $650 for that crane to come down. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna pay another $650 for him to come down and I'll put the mask back on. 
got the same thing done in Fort Lauderdale for 300. So, just got money flying out the door at the moment, but uh, not much we can do. It's time to remove this bad boy. So, interestingly, when we took the mast off, um, all of this water started pulling up at the base of the compression post, dripping down into the bilge there. So, I've got a funny feeling this guy here is full of water. So, this external rust that we can see on the outside here is pretty bad, but it'll be interesting to see what's happening on the inside as well. So, did that oh. just pay for itself? <laughs> you laughed at me when I bought that. <laughs> got instructions from the lagoon just to cut this thing in half. But we've got a couple of bottle jacks, we've got a sabre saw, we've got everything we need to um, to get this puppy out. Hopefully I've got a text back from the metal fabricator about when the new one is coming. Now. There they are. Oh, oh. So we're going to have to get longer ones. <laughs> So the two forward lag bolts screwed straight into the primary bulkhead and the aft two were through bolted with nuts and washers, just like the upper flange bolts. I'm gonna take the weight of the roof. A couple of jacks. B E A U to fill. There we go. That's just taking the weight. I won't go any harder than that. We are jacked up. It's already got a couple mil gap under it. Huh? I think you actually get off on this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. See why they say do it without the mast on. It's a lot of weight right there. It feels strange to be cutting through that. Yeah, I mean it feels good to be doing it, seeing the state that it's in. So it all just confirms that uh, we're doing the right thing. So it is actually full of water. Oh. So what part was leaking then? getting down the outside of this conduit so it mustn't be sealed around the base plate of the mast okay this is the new compression post this is Java from Neptuno so we've had to make it shorter so it will go in and then underneath that we're putting two three-quarter inch aluminium plates um, to take the load of the mast and I'm just gonna put a plastic shim between the aluminium and the steel. So we're just getting everything lined up, getting the plates under, getting it all measured. Then this can hopefully go in today. Okay, this can stay. Okay, he's done a couple of spot welds. Now the test is to see if it will actually go in. Yes, 
I need this to last a couple of years until I'm ready to pull the rig down again. And it will probably be just to do this. This whole operation is probably costing two and a half thousand dollars to get the mast down and then back up. That's not including any rigging or shipping or anything like that. That is just crane fees, yard fees, nightmare. So you can probably imagine that I am reluctant to be pulling the mast up again in a hurry. So Phil over there has painted this stuff with um, Rust-Oleum, the bottom end here at least, um, because it is a pretty exposed area. Those hatches, when they're open, you're getting a sea breeze, salty air up against this puppy uh, the whole time. Gonna obviously make sure that's all sealed up properly this time. So in she goes. So the first thing we're gonna do is put some um, thickened epoxy up there. Uh, that's not to glue the thing up, it's more just that once it cures, it'll have a nice flat even surface uh, for the top of the compression post to rest up against. So there's already some, um, looks like thickened uh, polyester resin, but we're going to go with epoxy and then we can bolt it up. Doesn't need much, it's a flat surface up there. Okay. Okay, if we just get one nut on it, it should be held. You ready? Yeah. Okay, ready. See, we've only, we only just had enough space to get that bottom in. So this is gonna go right up. Maybe um, if I lift it, you can get a washer and a nut on. Yep. Ooh. Oh, there's a bird inside. What the? <laughs> oh my god! What? Have you been a bird? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Which one are you doing first, Jimmy? Oh, oh, nice, Dad! Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Lindo, stay. Lindo? It's so cute. Come on. Lindo, Lindo. Lindo. Go. Bye bye, Angel! <laughs> Let's go, um. Pour it forward. Alright. Chosen one is chosen one. <laughs> chosen one is spoken. <laughs> Starboard aft. <laughs> so the way we shortened it, well the way the guy shortened it was to cut it right there take two inches off, cut it again, and then weld this plate up to there. Then, but we were, we were tack welding it and checking it. Two plates. Now shim. Look at that. It's jacked up slightly right now, so the weight is kind of off it. That looks pretty damn tidy if you ask me. Just got some tef gel, I'll just put it all up and down the shaft of this. Just where it's touching the steel. I'll just put a nylon washer under a stainless washer there. Just get that down. Boom. Just wait there, let me get a shot of this. Okay, the post is taken away. Was that a code screw or a lag bolt? Lag bolt. Lag, but it's a screw. And these actually go straight down into the bulkhead. This is our primary bulkhead here. That's my favorite. I like Gina. Shit. Okay, that's the compression post officially in. That's a win. Now we got to put a conduit in. Down this hole right here. Good at lunch while we cut it. That's probably what happened. Maybe the drain holes for the mast were blocked and this was filling up with water because the top of the mast is just open. And uh, it was getting over this lip and filling up the compression post. Okay. 
pretty. So once we put the cables through, I'm gonna cable tie this to itself like that. So water can't come down the cables. And, but we're also gonna seal this up now. We'll fill all of that gap around so that this guy can't leak anymore. So that was the new compression post officially installed and we were ready to re-rig the mast as the shrouds were in the air and well on their way to Puerto Vallarta. Intelligence stuff. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, hit subscribe and join us next week as we replace all of the standing rigging while getting an absolute masterclass from one of the owners of Selden Mast himself, Mr. Jonas Berg. So the lock height will, will lock the threads, right, once it dries up. Yeah. But I want, since it's stainless on stainless, I, I like to use, a, it also works as a lubrication. Right. So, Just to make that so we, we don't seize the threads before we even get to enjoy our stay lock. Okay. And now let's see how it looks like. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that baby. Woo! Wow. And the absolute beauty of this fitting, in my humble opinion, is that it, I mean, this is, could it be more simple in, in a way? You couldn't design something easier, right? Yeah. Um, and this is 